Hey everybody, this is Tim from the Marching Roundtable. Today we're talking about recruiting. I mean, is there anything more important than recruiting for your program? Super important. Let's see what the experts had to say first. I'm lucky enough that we have a middle school program. I make sure that I'm visible to those kids. I'm always around at shows. I stop by if they're in the stands. I pop over and I say hello so that they know who I am. One of the things that we did with that feeder program, we took the middle school director and we brought her in for our outdoor staff. Not only does that create fe some fidelity and continuity between the programs and consistency and how the kids are being taught, when those kids are ready to move up to the high school program for marching band, they walk in and she's there. There's a familiar face. It's not like you're having to start all over again. There's already somebody there who knows you, who knows what you're all about. And we also take advantage of all of the activities fairs that the school offers. They even bring kids down to the middle schools for incoming freshmen, and we've done performances for the last few years for the incoming freshmen at some of the middle schools. Those are great tips. Um, one of my groups, as or recent as last night, we just started a club guard because we have a sister of one of the girls who's a senior. The little sister's an eighth grader. She can't wait to get involved, but it's but it's not a K through eight district, so she can't really be involved now. So she's recruiting all her friends to join the guard next year. So we started a little club guard. We got approval for that, and they're all really excited about it. Um, just things like that. It's just getting that word out and trying to make it a really positive experience. Okay, guys, recruiting. So, so important to all of our programs, no matter what kind of group we have. What do you have to say? Well, I know as an independent group, it's very hard um, financially. You know, I think when you're more scholastic, you have the middle schools you can kind of grab from. You There's have infants, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But for an independent group, I think word of mouth. Um, hosting things in the summertime to just try and get people around. But if anybody can give me tips, ah, I'll take them. <laughs> so I, I, I know, like, there are independent groups all throughout the United States. Yeah. And a lot of times you have to make sure that you are not going into – Independent groups can be great havens for uh, kids that don't have high school programs that they're dealing with. So you got to also make sure that the directors, if you're going to a place that has a current high school group, you, you they need to get permission. The kids Definitely. sometimes have they've tried to go and join an independent group, and they have a group at their school, which creates some issues at times. We've had I've had that issue a couple of times. So you just uh, have to work together, yeah, and communicate yeah. with your other. Yeah, other and that, and that's the and as a recruitment person, that's also up to the student that if you're recruiting this person, they need to be very clear. That I also have a high school program that I march with. So how do I approach those? So. Well, I, I think that some of the you know, maybe not so obvious, but obvious ways would, I always say, I think that the current members of the group are the best recruiting tools. And, you know, I always, my, my students will say, well, I asked everyone I know, but did you really ask everyone you know? Did you talk about, have you really talked about the benefits of yeah. why you can't wait to get to Tuesday night practice. Yeah, talking uh, about what it's done for you. Exactly. It's very powerful. And social media, especially for an yeah. independent team. Social media is huge. The reach is huge. We have these amazing influencers that are actually working with us on a couple of different projects. They see how cool it is and they see how funny these people are. So I think that uh, social media is another huge tool that could be used. Now, for the fall, recruiting, a lot of times what happens is the winter is recruited from the fall. Yes. The, and right. but then as a as an instructor as a director you really want to make sure you're starting the process to recruit not only for guard but also for band yeah. from the very beginning and, and uh, the more they see your face especially as a director the, the more they feel comfortable and, and always go to concerts because you're wanting to recruit those kids you want to make sure that you're involved from the very beginning so by the time that I always say by the time they walk across the stage as seniors I've known them for seven years yeah yeah because that yeah. kind of that kind of communication that kind of relationship that you build is what keeps more kids coming in yeah and that's exactly what I was gonna say too is in this context of like high school band listen you are always recruiting like every yes. single thing, I mean, going out in the community and mm -hmm. running into someone the at the grocery store, store yeah. you're recruiting for your band. Yes. And every concert you give, every time your band is ever seen, but really every time you as a director are ever seen by the community, you are part, it's part of your recruiting. Yep. Because yeah. people are deciding, do I want to let this person work with my kid for years to come? Yes. And I love what you said, Bobby, about 
you know, we all know the best guard members are friends of people in the band already. Right. That's how we usually get them. Yeah. Yeah. So the students have to go out there yeah. and recruit their friends. And, you know, that's the kind of kids we want anyway. Right. Friends right. are the great friends. kids we have. Right. This was great, guys. Thanks a whole lot. For more about recruiting, go to the Marching Roundtable.